Okay, Alpha Channel is clearly not working here. Okay, well, clearly, if you're compositing with Lightwave, you want to render your Alpha Channel separately. So I'm going to quickly clone my image, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I got that cloned. Here we are. As you can see on this one, I've disabled the Alpha Channel. And on this one, the clone, I said Alpha only, so you can see it's a black and white image there. Now let's go in our compositing options. I put the Alpha disabled guy here, Alpha here. It shows you a little, what they call in the video land, fill and key previews here. Turn this on, this is very important. And render. Pops right up there. Looks great. It's uh, pretty much indistinguishable from the original render when I rendered everything at once. True, the shadow's a little bit sharper, but <laughs> nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know if you don't tell them. So there's that. Now let me show you what the deal is with that very important switch in the rendering options. Right here. Unpremultiply alpha. Okay, that's very important. Let's go in uh, a different program so I can show you what this looks like without Lightwave filtering the look of it. There, anyway, that didn't take long, did it? Okay, here I am in a paint program looking at the render. I'm looking at a close-up of his tootsies. We can crawl up, look at his face if you want, doesn't really matter. But the image was absolutely anti-aliased but what we're seeing looks blocky and chunky and gross. Why is that? Well, that's what that unpremultiply alpha thing does. Uh, normally when you render, if, there, if something has an alpha channel, it will uh, fade that, the color, the fill out, and I remember I told you what the fill is, it will fade that out along with the alpha channel. But if you leave that on, it will extend the, let me choose a different icon here. Ich. All right, it will extend that alpha channel, excuse me, the, the, the raw color will be out at full value until it reaches the part, the part where the alpha channel is completely black, in other words, completely transparent. So if I turn on the alpha channel, and you can see I put a gray background behind it, now you can see the alpha, the anti-aliasing is visible and is carried entirely through the alpha channel. So anytime you're doing compositing and you're rendering something with an alpha channel, you want to turn that unpremultiplied alpha channel set, setting on, setting on, on unpremultiplied. Now, if you are rendering something that is on black but is not going to be saved with an alpha channel, for example, a flame effect. You just want some flame on black that you will use a, a screen mode a, a compositing later. Then you definitely want to say your alpha channel is pre. Now the word's escaping me. Pre multiplied. Okay, you definitely want pre multiplied on at that time. So with alpha channel, on pre multiplied, without al alpha channel, multiplied. I hope I said that right. I'm going to play back later and listen to see if I screwed up. Okay? Uh, and uh, this kind of effect will be even more obvious when you have something that's moving with motion blur and uh, especially if something has, has any kind of illumination you'll see that the colors just get blown out as it fades out to black except that when you turn that alpha channel on everything goes right back the way it should look once it's composited in there. All right, so um, I think I'm going to stop this here. This video is long enough, I think. Uh, I can uh, show you more about compositing in future videos, the advantages of it. Right now I've shown you one advantage. Uh, there are many more advantages, uh, some advantages that cannot be taken advantage of in Lightwave alone. However, you may need a, an actual compositor. With, it has more flexibility than a single layer system.
So, oh, I forgot one thing. This is important too. When you are rendering your foreground layer with your, well, if you're doing it in a light wave with your separate color and alpha channel uh, render options, right there you'll set maybe a target 24 for your foreground uh, fill and then for your key 24 bit or even uh, if you can find an 8 bit grayscale option that's fine too and there uh, when you want that to happen you need to use render scene you can't just render frame and then save your image out from the render output window you need to use render scene okay that's it